I'm Savetta Matsumoto. And I'm Henry Sagerman. And I'm going to tell you about a project we did with Fabian Serrier, which is called Mobius Cellular Automata Scarves. So first off, uh, Fabian had a really interesting uh, knitting machine that had a particular type of knitting called uh, double knits. And in double knits, you have a two color pattern. There's um, a white here and blue here. And what I'm showing you is the front and the back of the scarf. So if it's white on the front, then it's blue on the back. And if it's blue on the front, it's white on the back. So using this binary color scheme, she thought it would be really interesting to make uh, cellular automata scarves. So the basic idea for cellular automata is you have a pattern of colors. So here, uh, white, black, black, and you look up on the chart. So here we've got white, black, black, and you look for the color underneath, and that's going to give you the middle color of the next row. So we can fill out this type of generative pattern. But someone asked on Twitter, what happens if we do this on a Mobius strip? So in order to do this on a Mobius strip with this particular type of scarf, what happens is when you look at the back of the scarf, you're switching uh, anything that was white to something that is black, and then you have to reverse the direction. So instead of reading this way, we're now reading this way for the Mobius twist. So we need to define some operation that does this, and we call this the scarf inverse. So this is saying that um, if I have um, some binary number, I've got 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, I can take the mirror of it, so that'll give me 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then I take the complement of it, so swapping the colors, and that gives me 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And so this operation is the scarf inverse. So uh, in order to have the same cellular automata run on both sides of the Mobius strip, if you'll pardon my inaccurate statement about Mobius strips having both sides, uh, this puts some restrictions on the possible uh, elementary cellular automata you can have. There are 64 total. Uh, only eight of them have the right property. And six of those are boring. You just get sort of repeating patterns. There are two that are interesting, uh, these two that are on screen here. Uh, and so, OK, so we have these uh, cellular automata that we want to, to use. Now we have to find a scarf. And for physical knitting reasons, you want a scarf to be about 100 stitches wide and 1,000 stitches long. And the requirement that it connects together at the end is that the line after the last line must be the scarf inverse of the first. And this is maybe not so easy to find uh, because you've got a lot of possible uh, scarf rows to the 100 possible uh, lines, and if you just sort of, well, let's just start somewhere and move a thousand lines down and hope that we hit the inverse, it's, you're not, you're not going to have a good time. Uh, so we cheat. Um, we say, let's uh, start with uh, an, a 2n wide scarf with a random length n uh, pattern, which we concatenate with its scarf inverse. This means that every line, this line and every line subsequent is its own scarf inverse. So now all we need to do is find a loop, right? When we get to the end, of uh, if we find a loop, then we can connect it with uh, the twist, and it connects up. Or we could make an annulus if we wanted. So these are the two scarves that we found. So this one here is rule 150, and this one here, sorry, is 105, and this one is 150. Um, and these are related patterns. So everywhere you see a solid triangle in rule 150, in rule 105, you're going to have horizontal stripes. And everywhere you've got vertical stripes in rule 150, you have a checkerboard pattern in rule 105. And so the scarf I have here is the rule 150 scarf. And the last thing for this is we needed a way to join it up so that there is no seam. And the way you do this in knitting terms is this thing called Kitchenering, um, and so we needed to figure out how to do this as a, a multicolor process. So, so that's the the main knitting innovation for this particular scarf. So, in the last minute, I'm going to switch topics and put um, a plug out for uh, this Illustrating Mathematics Discord server. Um, and Illustrating Mathematics is a community where we are interested in elevating. Um, the idea of illustration via 3D printing, laser cutting, 
um, virtual reality. This is um, playing with light, textiles, uh, paper cutting, all of these different media to an academic um, to an academic pursuit where we can use these things to help us generate conjectures and prove theorems. Uh, so this is the Discord server link, um, and here's a QR code if that's easier for you. Um, I highly encourage anyone who is interested in these ideas to uh, join our community. Thank you.